Here's a hot take for you. These things are a borderline scam and you might be getting took. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd with Bishop's RV, kind of continuing this virtual like RV myth busting series that we've kind of started here. <coughs> oh God, what happened? I, I think I literally just choked on thin air. Sorry, I don't edit my videos a lot. Anyway, what I want to talk about today is uh, kind of almost busting the myth of what our people often refer to as RV thermal pane windows. And the fact that frankly, almost all of them are not thermal pane windows. I wanna to explain to you what you're actually getting and how frankly, they don't do all that much for you, but they do cost a lot more. So most RV windows look like this. I think we're pretty familiar with that. It's just a single pane of glass that slides forward and shut. Typically they're framed in, but then you see this option on a, on a checklist somewhere that will say things like dual pane, or sometimes they flat out say thermal pane windows. And sometimes they try to get cute and say thermo pane window with an O. Whatever the case, what are these? What, what are these things? What are we actually getting here? Well, typically they look like this. They just look like another frameless window. It's visually, it's almost impossible to tell the difference. Except these dual pane windows will usually have a little sticker down here. It often says something like "insulated window." Uh, but the thing is, it's it's really it's not it's not. And here's why I say that: a normal standard RV window, single pane RV window is an R0.7 insulative uh, value. Ba uh, to give you a reference, a normal sidewall in an RV is typically an R7 to a nine. And now you've got a hole in the wall that is basically almost nothing, less than one. So, uh, especially with the, the recent trend in, in the last few years where people want more windows and bigger windows, they're absolutely, we're, you know, destroying the potential insulative quality of the RV, which is one of the reasons that a lot of people have suddenly noticed, like, man, I'm having a hard time keeping my RV cooled off in the summer sun because, yeah, you've got a giant thermal hole in the wall there. So they say, okay, well, what can I do about that? And they see this box that says, like, thermal pane window, and that has to be the magic solution. But the trick is, it's not the type of thermal window that you're thinking it is. Because you're thinking and probably in terms of something like this, you're thinking of a household thermal pane window, which is two sheets of glass, but there's a gap in between them. And typically it's filled with some kind of gas to prevent that uh, easy transmission of thermal energy, heat basically. And uh, the thing is that's, that's not what you're getting with an RV quote thermal pane window. It is a dual pane, but instead of being hollow, you know, with two sheets of glass, it's a bonded window, meaning bonded, meaning like glued together, laminated. So it's, it's two sheets of glass that are just directly connected to one another. It doesn't have that break point in the middle that prevents and slows greatly that transmission of heat. Uh, so the thing is here, like what kind of R value difference are we actually talking about? Well, you would think being dual pane, it would just be double, right? It makes sense, but that's not actually how things work out. Uh, a standard RV window, as I think I mentioned previously, has an R0.7 value. When you go to these dual panes, these bonded two sheets of glass together dual panes that most RVs have, we're gonna talk a little bit about some exceptions later, that when you get into dual panes, most RVs just have two pieces of glass glued together. It only increases its R value by about 30%. So we're talking going from an R0.7 to an R still 0.91, still less than one. There is virtually no discernible significant insulative uh, gain by going to these very expensive windows. What's funny, there's literally a zero dollar way that you could do better without spending extra money on the, the dual pane thermal pane things. And you've got it built right into the camper. It's the shades that you pull over the window. By pulling that shade down, one, you've blocked the direct sunlight that comes into the RV, which greatly reduces the heat uh, that way anyway. But you've also effectively created an inside and an outside. You've created an air break, an air gap. Now, air can still certainly breathe and bleed around a shade or a blind like this. But the fact is you have made it slower. You have made it harder for that exchange of thermal energy, for that ability for... You know, if, it's, if you're cold camping for heat to get out of the RV, if you're hot camping for heat to get in the RV, you've made it more difficult that way. And this is roughly like an R2.1 equivalent. Still not great, but more than twice as good as these thermal pane, dual pane bonded glass windows you usually get in most RVs for exactly zero dollars. Now you want to kick it up a notch like Emerald Lagasse? Before you do that, get some of that uh, foil reflectic stuff and put that on the windows here to help reflect a lot of the sunlight off. 
then pull the shade down. Now you've created reflectivity, you've created an air break, and that is about as good as you're really going to get on most windows, single pane or dual pane thermal type windows. I know I'm doing a lot of air quotes over here, but it's because the, the specific verbiage used in this conversation is very, very important. Now, along with this, there's also what I generally feel is mostly a myth or, or misunderstanding related to condensation forming on the windows. There's a lot of people who will say, yeah, but those dual pane windows, I've had both and, and those dual pane windows, I definitely don't see condensation build up on those windows near as bad as I used to with single pane windows. And the thing is, you are tricking yourself into thinking that you're fixing the problem. Condensation is moisture in the air in the RV finding a place to settle and collect. The composition of the window has zero bearing, has no effect on the uh, amount of humidity and moisture in the air of your RV. The composition of that window doesn't change the air in your RV. All you're doing is making it a little more difficult for that uh, moisture in the air to find a place to land, but it will find some place to land. And I can almost promise you, it's not going to be a place you want to be. It will create a musty, moldy, mildew smell. It'll find a little out of the way corner to kind of build up and slowly create a uh, like a little uh, mildew kind of rot spot somewhere in the RV. Or sometimes you'll see some RV have uh, the, the wallpaper actually starts to almost curl and crinkle from things like that. If your goal is to try to get rid of condensation, the only real solution is running a dehumidifier in your RV. Now those big black air conditioners or white air conditioners or whatever on top of RVs, those naturally dehumidify in the hot summer months. Now, if you live in crazy humid country, uh, you, you, may, you may need to run two of those things and you may still need to run a dehumidifier inside. But where people get mixed up is in the wintertime, you lose the organic dehumidifier built onto the top of your RV because your furnace does not remove moisture from that air. So if you're going to be cold camping, it is very important that you get yourself a dehumidifier to get rid of that condensation that will build up like crazy because you don't even have the air conditioner helping get rid of that stuff. So does that mean these things are just completely no good whatsoever? No, uh, they do have, I think, one significant, pretty much undeniable benefit. When you go, even the dual glass pane bonded windows glued together, uh, like I've talked about a bunch of times, they are really good at knocking down noise. They really drown out a lot of noise from the outside of the RV. It's a, it's a difference that you can experience even a lot of times if you're just shopping around different dealership lots. Go into like a basic trailer that has no special window package, then go into one that does have the uh, upgraded dual pane windows, even if they are the, the bonded together style, and just sit there and listen, and it is, noticeably quieter and a little more pleasant in there. So if what you're looking for, if you're gonna be around other people and neighbors and you just wanna keep the volume down, they may be something where the juice is worth the squeeze to you. They, ha they do have some secondary and tertiary benefits, but insulative quality and getting rid of condensation that a lot of people associate with these thermal pane windows, those are not, uh, you know, uh, really truly things that they excel at doing. But earlier in the video, I said how almost all these RV thermal pane quote insulated windows uh, are the are the dual pane bonded glass varieties that don't have a hollow core, no kind of gas charge. Is there anybody that you know does anything different than that? The short answer is yes. The long answer is you're gonna have to look pretty hard to find them. You will typically only find true RV thermal pane windows with a hollow gas charge or anything in them in some very select, very high dollar uh, like luxury brands, like some diesel pushers, maybe some very, very uh, high dollar uh, fifth wheels, things like that. But typically speaking, the kind of, uh, you know, more core industry stuff that you see me cover on this channel, I, I can't think of a single manufacturer that offers true thermal pane windows. Those that are offering dual pane, quote, thermal windows, it is the two sheets of glass, not with a hollow core, but glued right together. And uh, again, it helps knock the noise down, but uh, you know, no major other secondary benefits. But what about those Euro style windows? Well, these are definitely far more rare and less common to run into. But what's cool about these is that they are a true dual pane. There is an inside and an outside layer to it. 
um, and they are hollow. So there is sort of an air break in between. Now, the trick is trying to get true R value information on stuff like this is, is it's like pulling teeth. It is very, very hard. I'm still working on that at the time of this filming. If I can get some information, I'll maybe leave you an update on the screen, but I don't have an actual hard scientific proven number of what an R value on one of these Euro style windows are. You typically find them on truck campers or like I just showed you an Ember here. There's a few brands that do use things like this. What I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt from personal experience and listening to uh, owners and I I'd love to see some ownership feedback on these kind of things right here is they are incredibly noise canceling and while I don't have the hard number I do know for a fact that they are uh, letting a lot less heat into the RV and I know that because it is a difference you can literally feel on a hot summer day go to like a dealership lot go on the inside of a window facing the Sun and literally put your hand on the window pane and it's gonna get hot real fast then go to one of those dual pane things, do the same thing. It's gonna feel exactly the same. It's really not gonna be any different. But you go over to one of these, and yeah, you're gonna feel some heat from the sun, but it is not the same. And your hand doesn't get blistering hot nearly as quickly. So if what you're looking for is try to find all the insulation qualities and in all the different areas that you possibly can, that might be something to look at. But the trick is, again, they're really only found on specific brands and it's not something that you can like ask for or option on to most conventional RV build. So a little bit of extra info there for you. Now, this next thing here is just really my personal opinion. My personal hot take on this is if an RV has everything you want, except it doesn't have the little box check for the thermal pane windows, I wouldn't flinch. I wouldn't hesitate in the slightest if it was my own money. In fact, uh, what I would do is I'd spend just a fraction of that cost because these thermal pane, dual pane window upgrades, they can run sometimes a couple grand. Like they are a bunch of money for a couple grand. Do you know the kind of things that I could accomplish to cover a window to keep the sun and the heat out? Uh, I, I I know that I could get something that's far more effective for. Let's let's be aggressive and say 10% of the cost. I bet it's less than that. That's my two cents. Now, if an RV already had the dual pane windows on it, cool. Again, there are some secondary benefits to it. I'm not going to be mad that they're there. I just don't think I need to go out of my way to get them. But that is my personal nerdy opinion. I would love for folks who have owned one or both types of these windows to leave some comments down below and let us know what you think are folks who have, uh, you know, had a trailer that now has those uh, like dual pane Euro style windows. And what are your impressions of those? And what has been your experience in real world application? Uh, or do you think that they're, you know, doing the job or not? I love how you folks continue to leave this feedback. We've created a community and, you know, we're all helping one another Another, learn how to camp a little bit better and if you appreciate how we take some time away from all the normal walkthrough videos to get you little tidbits like this hit that subscribe button like our video and maybe share this into your favorite you know RV social group or something like that to help spread the message let's see what we can come up with and until next time take care stay safe have fun and best wishes from Bishes everyone mm -hmm.